Hi, I'm Nicholas Corell. I'm a seventh-year assistant professor at the University of Colorado at Boulder. And I would like to share a framework that has been very helpful for, to me in writing grants and papers, which is known as the Heilmeier Catechism. So the Heilmeier Catechism has been articulated by George Heilmeier, who has been the head of DARPA and the CTO of Texas Instruments, among other accolades he got. Um, and he came up with a laundry list of very simple questions that uh, I received for the first time on the back of a business card when visiting my DARPA program manager. And at first I thought, well, well, these are great questions, and obviously I have to think about what I'm trying to do. Obviously I have to think about uh, what's, what's new in it and how much it will cost and so on. But it was only until later that I realized that the real key in understanding or using this catechism is to answer all of the nine questions with one story. And if you cannot answer a single of these questions or not fully answer a single of these questions, then your proposal is probably no good and needs some revision. And maybe you have to just modify your story very slightly because you have good ideas and you have a good plan. But doing so will allow you to answer all of the questions and provide a consistent story to somebody who wants to appreciate your work. So um, I am sure you have read the questions uh, by now. Um, and I think it's uh, best to move actually into a concrete example, which would be writing a proposal that supports your career as a scientist. And so. These uh, career proposals can be anything like an NSF career proposal or DARPA or ONR. And what is different about them than a regular proposal is um, that it's about your career and not just a single project that you fancy to work on. And so, um, again, the high mile questions will help you with every proposal, but I think applying them to your career is maybe the most abstract thing that you could do. And so it's maybe most instructive to think about it. So what are you trying to do? Well, you don't try to build gadget X or solve problem Y, but what you want to do is you want to become a leader in your field in 10 years from now. And maybe becoming a leader in your field is a little strong language, so maybe you want to just become a leader in subspecialization X. So it's a very, very clear part of your field that you want to be known for. So in 10 years, people asked about subspecialization X, they should say your name, um, maybe within the first three people that come to their mind. Now, how is it done today and what are the limits of current practice? Now you can think about how your field currently solves that problem and how others in that field work on it and what you should do in order to um, improve it. So this gets us to the third question, what's new in your approach and why do you think it will be successful? So now you can write down your ideas on how things should be done. And you can articulate why you think they should be done that way and why do you think they're going to work. So this is probably the, really the meat of your proposal. Who cares? Well, the question is, what is, it, what is the relevant work in your field? and who is currently doing it. And those people who do that work are probably the people who are going to care about um, most of your, your results here or your proposal, and maybe even the people who benefit uh, that directly from the applications uh, that you enable. So if you're successful, what difference will it make? Well, what are all the things that people could do if your field would advance in subspecialization X? What are the risks and the payoffs? This is a very difficult question when you have a proposal and you have to think about the risks. And so what is it actually? Well, what are the reasons people are not already doing what you are doing is always a good thing to ask first. So these are probably the main risks in your ideas that have deterred people, deferred people from doing it so far. Now, we haven't really answered the payoffs, but let's skip about that. Skip that one for now. Um, because this will not be the, the sole problem with this uh, outline that we are trying to come up with now. Well, how much will it cost? Obviously, it's going to cost exactly the same amount that the granting agency is ready to shed out for that, but um, 
you should rather think about how many students and postdocs you actually will need, what is the equipment that you need, what are the materials that you need, and think really clearly about what the activities are that you're actually going to do. So how long will it take? And when you review proposals um, by yourself and you might compare person X and person Y and both of them are good people and both of them have good ideas, I guarantee you you're going to fund the person who is very specific about what they want to do. So one person has a great idea and is specific, the other person has a great idea and is vague. Well, obviously, you have to go for that one who clearly articulates what needs to be done and how much will it cost and how long will it take are great questions to that um, extent. So finally, what are the midterm and final exams to check for success? And I think now um, we just realized our first big mistake here. So what are you trying to do is, well, you want to become a leader in your field in 10 years. But now you just told me it will only take three years to get there. Well, somehow you cannot show that you'll be a leader in 10 years because you're done after three. Well, now you can think about how that could be solved and maybe picking a very, very specific research project that exemplifies the big problem in your field that you want to tackle and has a clear metric for success can help you here. So let's go back and think about that very, very specific project and how we can alter the questions and the answers to it. All right, so what are you trying to do? Well, you still want to become a leader in your field, but now you're very specific um, with a project Y that exemplifies what the problem um, that you want to address is. Now, how does your field currently solve that subspecialization X that you are interested in, and how does that make Y a hard problem? If you can show that, people will be very convinced that tackling Y is actually a good idea to become a leader in your field in 10 years. What's new in your approach? Well, you can be very specific now on how doing the things that you want to do will help with why, and how are you actually going to go about that specific problem. Who cares? Now we have a new group of people who care, um, and these are the people who are also working on why right now, and the people who might benefit from applications that why enables. What difference will it make? Well, it will make all the differences that X makes, but also Y. And what are the risks and payoffs? And I think um, if you remember, we weren't really clear on the payoffs before. So we said, what are the reasons people are not already doing what you're doing? That's a big risk. But now you can say, what are the specific challenges with Y? And why did you choose it? Because it makes progress toward X. So there's a huge payoff right there. If I work on Y, if you let me work on this Y thing, I can not only solve Y, but I can make progress toward X. I can make progress toward becoming a leader in my field in 10 years. Um, and that's why I should get funded. But how much will it cost? Uh, now you have to massage this a little bit, be even more specific um, about your specific problem. Y, same here for the time. And finally, you can crank out very, very specific intermediate steps that show how you make progress toward why, and by now it should also be clear why this actually advances the overall field X. So I think with that, you have a pretty solid career proposal if you can, if you can take your ideas and what you want to work on and cast it in that framework. And I have two exercises for you. One is to write an abstract for your proposal using just one sentence per Heimer question. You should do that right now. And a little later, you might want to think about uh, writing an abstract for your last research paper. Again, just using one sentence for high my questions, except the one on the cost and on the time.